Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to another Capsule Series Selection. Today, in this list, I want to kind of represent something that's off the beaten path. I want to talk about for fragrances and the way I wear them. And I'm sure many of you do. This is the type of collection that I uh, pull from when I want to be abstract in my presence. This is the type of fragrance that I pull for when I want to be off the beaten path as stated in somewhat of an anomaly when it comes to a fragrance accord on my skin. This, to me, is the avant-garde part of fragrance collecting, the avant-garde part of experimenting with fragrances, and the actual ex going about putting on different things on my skin to see how they make me feel, how they make me express myself. And so in these basic um, aphrodisiacs, but avant-garde in their style, I want to bring them to you in this content and hope that you enjoy it. So if it does sound like something you think you'll enjoy, pull up a seat, pour a glass, and of course, let's enhance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Dry Down, the lifestyle channel where we as enthusiasts aspire to enhance and elevate our olfactive sensory experiences through the understanding of the different aromas, faucets, and nuance of scent cigars and wine. I'm your host, Chris. Welcome to today's experience. We're going to dive into a list today. Like I stated, this is going to be an avant-garde aphrodisiac style list, something that really draws in the carnal appreciation, the carnal sexuality, the carnal sensuality of some fragrances while being so experimental for my collection at least that they come off different from anything else that I smell and that's why they actually made it into my collection. I'm going to start off with first the one fragrance from the house of Ordo Parisi that really got me firing on my senses and really brought me into a carnal sensuality and that is the fragrance of Simonalis as I stated by Ordo Parisi. Now this is a fragrance, that's the back side of it, this is a fragrance that is said to smell like the name in, in kind of envelops the name of it. It's, it's meant to smell like semen, as stated. But to me, this is a warm, woody, musky scent that has creamy facets of sandalwood and a lot of carnal musk in it. It's a very, like stated, avant-garde style of fragrance because I've never smelled anything quite like this in its representation. It's very smooth, yet ambery, spicy, woody tonality to it. Very different in the way it comes across on my skin and skin I've smelled it on others or have allowed to sample this particular scent. When you smell it, you get everything that comes in tones with like a hard lactonic sandalwood. And it does give some reminiscent thoughts of a greenness and also a ambery touch as stated. They don't appreciate, well, I won't say they don't. They don't. Um, published notes for this particular brand of fragrances so we can't really draw from what it was all we can do is take our interpretation of it and for me this is a scent that when I wear it it feels of a great cool weather fragrance so that's going to be spring fall in the temperatures of around 60 to 45 degrees maybe 70 degrees in, in that range and what it does for you once it dries down on the skin after about 15 20 minutes it becomes this very stoic yet lacquered woods type of scent for me and that's on my skin and I've, on other people's skin the musk and the floral co components of this has come off very high pitch but for me it's a I can't really describe and that's the avant-garde part of this particular list it goes beyond the realm of what I've had in my collection and or smell and so it's this very sensual sexual type of scent and smell that I really appreciate on my skin so if you ever get a chance to smell Seminalis by the house of Ordo Parisi I think you should. It's one, it's not going to be for everybody. Like everything on this list is not going to be for everybody. But this is one that's really peculiar smelling, but really sensual, sexual, and has some great compliment factors. And I have had those compliments flourished upon me while wearing this particular scent. Once again, Seminalis by Ordo Parisi. Lacquered wood, lacquered sweet woods, mostly sandalwood, maybe a little bit of cedar in there, some amber, some spicy, woody tonality to it. Very sensual fragrance. Once again, like I stated. Ordo Parisi's Simonellis. Ladies and gentlemen, next up on the list, we're going to dive into the house of Mosca Milano and the fragrance from this that's avant-garde for me from that particular house. Most of those fragrances from the house are off the beaten path. They have a lot of great perfumers that were able to experiment and, and light a fire under themselves and not extinguish that fire by the actual brand telling them what they would do and would not do. And Cecile Zerokia made Tango, and Tango is one of the sexiest fragrances in my collection and it's so different to, from most amber fragrances in my collection I classify it as a woody amber in myself a spicy woody amber but it's so different in its tone the way it comes off 
this is one of the most sensual aphrodisiac fragrances in my collection when it comes to that as a wearing proposition for me it's a very peppery nuanced fragrance very warm spicy fresh spicy but the the thing that really gives this its status of experimental for me is the way that she was able to use sweet benzoin jasmine sambac and cumin in this particular scent those particular notes in this one is are very very prominent they are very very alive they make the fragrance really really blossom on the skin and when you smell that it smells like none other that you smelled before not saying that it's not anything on the market that has a similarity but i'm saying this particular scent and the way the the composition is blended in the way that she wanted the notes to come off the skin the higher pitch notes that's the cumin that's the jasmine sambac and patchouli with that very very sweet tone of ambry benzoin just a nice sweet clove in the basin that's clover leaf and it's like this green like this yellow fleshy green smell in the base of it it brings everything together and it's very much so a part of bringing an experimental style of fragrance to the market its name is apropos it does smell like a fiery dance very musky very peppery very sweet you get all of the tones of that mid that i talked about and that's the thing about this is a calling card for sensuality sexuality and avant-garde status in my collection once again tango by the house of mas Milano. very different in the way it's done executed and i think i enjoy the scent greatly because of that next up guys we're going to talk about scorpio rising by the house of Eris parfums as you're going to start seeing in this list, this list is very much so a part of the very niche, very indie type of fragrance list. This is not one of a mass appealing list. This has no designers on it. This has many. Well, it does have one designer. Let me take that back. The designer, this is also one of the most uh, provocative and avant-garde fragrances. But what you see here is me bringing out a list of fragrances that I think many of you guys who are um, very sophisticated fragrance wearers will have a fun time seeking out and sampling these fragrances to get in your collection and knowing that you smell different than anybody else in the, a 200 mile radius or really. Um, so this one here is Scorpio Rising. And what Scorpio Rising does for me, man, Antoine Life really did a great job of formulating this one. This is here, it's not anything that you have never smelled before, so to speak, but the way it's formulated as just with tango the pitch in which he formulated to make the notes come off so well and higher higher very very high quality oils the black pepper in this one the somalian frankincense are the most prominent calling cards to this one but it has so many notes from ambrox and cashmere wood clove guayac woods nargamata it has a, um, a Madagas madagascar and cinnamon leaf in this one all these notes in the chorus make for the spicy, woody, green, smoky style of fragrance that really is becoming and beguiling when it comes to a gentleman's fragrance that any man puts this on his skin is going to become attractive and alluring to a female nose. And that's why I'm bringing this to aficionado and not just aphrodisiac, but aficionado type of scent. This is one that you guys... When you talk about getting elevated fragrances in your collection, this is one to me that takes all the things that could be c contradictory in the way we talk about designer fragrances or how we want them to be just a tad bit different. This one here is what you can remarkably say is an aphrodisiac for an aficionado that comes off like a designer wearing fragrance, but the way that the oils are smelling of so much higher quality than a designer scent, it makes it avant-garde because that black pepper is such a sweet 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 black pepper along with the frankincense sandalwood and the broxen and all the woody touches to it so like i said it makes for a spicy woody green fragrance that's very very nicely done peppery sweet and resinous and i greatly enjoy this one because it's one that really gives me a sense of uh, appreciation for the note of black pepper and the way it makes me come off as a um more of a stature appealing type of fragrance than anything else but it does have that carnal sensuality as well and when I say stature, I mean when you walk in with your shoulders and your head high, and this is one that really prevails in that area for you when you want to pitch that um, non-playfulness, non, -playfulness, non um, it comes off like you're walking through a concourse in the most luxurious of all airports headed to a destination to conquer uh, another business. So like you're a CEO going to, <laughs> to buy another business. You guys get the point. Scorpio Rising, very, very avant-garde. 
very very sensual and alluring as well this is a great date night fragrance for anybody that wants something elevated in their designer realm and don't take that designer realm uh, pitch lightly this is one that very much so smells slightly mass appealing but the avant-garde like i can't just i can't state it less the avant-garde appeal of this is the frankincense and black pepper which makes it so smooth sweet and provocative for any man to wear next up ladies and gentlemen we're going to talk about a Bertrand Dusha for Masterpiece done for the House of Mazda Bacali and this scent is Fusion Sacré Obscure and so Fusion Sacré Obscure is one of the first major indie fragrances that I purchased years ago because of I think when I think back now when I got into fragrance collecting and understanding what it was I was getting there was quite a few different uh, fragrance reviewers in the market that I watched and there's one actually he has um, some very very peculiar taste but it was always something that the way he moved and talked about his fragrances that got you appealing that you want to talk about them yourself see about them yourself and wear them and actually this is one of two on the list that he actually provided back then and this his name was Maximilian Hussler if you ever have a chance to look up his channel he was a great guy in New York I don't know what he's done with his life or where it's been but he made a great content channel for us with experimental fragrances that none of the other guys at the time were talking about. And so Fusion Sacré is one of those fragrances that really came off for me as impressive when I started watching him and buying on his um, impressions. And it's a great, great fragrance, so to speak. This one comes off with a rum accord in the opening with a bitter orange, cardamom, lavender. So it starts off aromatic, sweet, spicy, and then it goes to this gourmand-leaning coffee caramel and licorice then it transforms itself into a, a, a like the a resinous base with cedar benzoin and papanax and sandalwood with a lot of amber and musk but the thing about this one that makes this truly truly a standout accord that makes it avant-garde and experimental is the heavy dose of a celery accord which really is a harmonizing scent across the entire fragrance you would think that a celery accord would be something off-putting while something not for everyone of course it is not something that is off-putting that you will not want to wear on your skin because of the sensuality of all the other accords revolving around that celery makes it very provocative and invocative of sensuality while being peculiar and so off the beaten path you will be more interesting and bringing in people who are more interested in the way you look, smell, and receive that as sensuality. Man, if any of you guys, I'm hoping I'm dropping some gems on you because these scents, I don't see them anywhere on many people's channels. And I'm saying to you right now, Fusion Sacré, if you get your chance, is one of the most peculiar experimental fragrances that I've ever smelled. And I treat it as such. So when I wear this one, this is something I'm wearing out on date nights and or lounge nights to places where I know there's going to be a crowd around me who will um, become more... Uh, it, it, the, the evocation of what I want people to see when I wear this one is a sexual, um, fun-loving person. And that celery, which... To you, you smell celery, but to them, they smell something of a spicy greenness. Now, you know in your head that it's celery here because of the note structures and breakdown, but to the people around you, it's such a peculiar scent. It draws people in. It draws people to your neck, especially um, your dates you know, on situations like that. So once again, Fusion Sacré, done by Bertrand Dusha for by the House of Majda Bacali. It's one of those fragrances that I think all you guys should get your nose on, at least a sample of to experiment how it feels. Fusion Sacré, great scent. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the scent of Ganymede by the house of Marc Antoine Barrois. This scent is meant to evoke a planetary <laughs> a cold, just a, a asteroid, a planetary asteroid. And the cool coldness of this one is exactly what I think it does. There are two fragrances in my collection that really provide this type of scent profile for me. One is up a how you, it's, it's either Apollonia or Apollonia done by the house of Zerzhov. Really cool, really cold, musky, iris, violet fragrances that come off leathery, animalic, but very, very cold and stoic. And this here, what I've gotten from Ganymede, um, when I first got this one, everyone knows I had bought it and sold it because I didn't like it. I ended up getting Boyce Imperial. And then Boyce Imperial, however much it does smell similar to it, it's not the same as Ganymede. And so what I think I did, I got a bottle of Ganymede directly from Ganymede's website. 
I let it macerate a little bit and then I became more and more appreciative of it because of the Akigali wood, what I come to love um, as a synthetic wood note. The Akigali wood and the Gregory woods are very much so prominent in my collection now because of the way they come off and smell as woody tonalities. But the scent of Ganymede has one of the best Osmathus, Saffron, and Immortel Absolute combinations that make this so off the beaten path while still being one of the most sensual and sexual fragrances in your collection that you could provide yourself with to bring in others as a drawing fragrance. Ganymede is one of those fragrances for me that I wear four seasons now. I'm going to wear it this summer because it comes off well in the heat. I've tested it in the heat and it came off very well. You do two sprays max of this one because it is a performer, a projector, and one that you will have people around you appreciating that scent especially that because of that saffron mandarin and akigali wood that's in this but never forget the thing that makes this avant-garde for me is that spicy tonality of the chinese osmathus absolute which is one of the um calling cards to this particular scent along with that woody tones and leatheriness the suede leather and that immortal in this man this if you want a, a classic style of fragrance that's off the beaten path as stated in this video previously and you want to know what a Immortal fragrance shines like like I have several in my collection that have Immortal in it and that's a note that's like this hay sweetness um, slightly dried grass sweetness and it's I would say in some tonalities it's similar to what vetiver can do but it's on its own path because it's more floral than the vetiver is and less grassy but they still have the same kind of encompassing note structure if you want something with Immortal in it that has a great, great scent profile that comes off the skin well in its, not only its wake and, and uh, sillage, but also its projection, that is Ganymede by the house of Marc Antoine Barbar. Great scent. Gentlemen, let's talk about Mr. Provocateur himself, Tom Ford. This is a scent that you guys know about, but it's still avant-garde in its structure, avant-garde in its presentation, and avant-garde in its smell. This is the scent that was, man, off the cap killed it so this scent as you may know many of you do many of you may not this scent was a provocative scent of smelling like a, a masculine um crotch that's what he said that's what was stated in many of the interviews he was given excuse me when he made this particular scent it was supposed to smell of and evoke the scent of a masculine crotch and that sensuality is, is something that you would have to say is definitely an avant-garde type of smell Pierre Negrin is the perfumer for this, and he did a phenomenal job by representation of bringing in accords that are not prevalent in perfumery. And this is still one of the best performing, best selling fragrances of all. It's never been copied in the way and structure that it is. It comes off with a black truffle, black currant, black orchid, black rose, lotus wood, balsamic touches of frankincense, sandalwood, and vanilla with some patchouli essence. But the standout of this is that black orchid along with that black truffle and a encompassing yellow floor ylang ylang. This is a standout fragrance and I must say that it was first launched in the masculine bottle with a connotation to sell to our women. More men picked it up and then they changed how they were marketing this particular fragrance. So now they've marketed toward the masculine. And this is one that many of us who have had the courage to go out and wear it. Not saying that it's one that's simple to wear at all. It's not. It's something you have to be confident in and wearing. But once you pull it off a couple of times, you know what it's doing on your skin. You know how to make that projection and CIs work for you around a certain crowd. You know what this fragrance will do for you. And for me, this is one of the best avant-garde sensual sexual fragrances on the market that I enjoy wearing and I won't stop wearing this because this is a scent that in even in summertime there's a fruity accord to this one that comes off actually very very well in the summertime I I implore any of you guys who have this in your collection to try this with two or three sprays in the summertime with a cream or black linen blazer some slacks and some loafers you wear this particular scent in that type of attire, in a high class restaurant, in a concert, in a any type of setting that's going to be elevated. You can wear it casually because it's that type of fragrance as well because it has some dumbing down to it with the patchouli and sandalwood in the base with vanilla and vetiver. But all in all, when you wear this in the essence of the way the black tie style of chill can be, you will be the head of the class in that particular realm with this avant-garde scent. Once again, black orchid very smooth, very carnal, very sensual, very sexual. And if you've if you've ever smelled orchid or lily 
in a home and you know that decaying floral smell, <laughs> not to sound off-putting at all, because it's actually one of the best parts of this particular scent. That note, the way they structured it, makes it smell of decaying flowers, but it makes it smell very, very good. Once again, Black Orchid by Tom Ford. Ladies and gentlemen, last on this list, this is a fragrance that's been in my collection for quite some time. And as I stated earlier, there was a gentleman named Maximilian Huesler who did perfume reviewers back in the day. And I, as I look, he must have been a very um, appreciative person of what Bertrand du Chauffeur used to do. So this is a fragrance by the House of L'Artisan Parfums. And it's been in my collection for such a long time. And I wear it a lot. Not... I can't say a lot. Let me say this. I wear it or wore it so often that I wore it through the bottle. And I want to give you guys an impression of this particular fragrance before it's all gone. Um, because it is on the very last drop of this particular scent. This is one that was a calling card for sensuality. I remember the exact video he talked about this in. It was a, he had two ladies come to his home, smell his entire collection, and he wanted them to give a top five of what they said was the best sexiest fragrances in the collection. It was a fun video to watch. It was a fun video to re -go, go back into and research the scents that they were talking about and the way that they talked about skin on skin by the House of L'Artis and Perfume, I would never forget that. This is a scent that once I got it in, it smells of sweet, sexual, just sweet, sexual aphrodisiac is all I can just really describe this as. I want to spray it, but I won't because there's so few drops left in here. So what I'll do is just speak on it best as I can. If you are a person that loves Dior Homme Intense or Dior Homme with that iris accord, the iris in this, along with what Bertrand du Chauffeur came up with a sensual skin accord, I'm not sure how he structured that, but in the notes of all databases and even when I looked at it for Larson Perfumes website, it said sensual skin accord. So however Bertrand du Chauffeur was able to round out something that smelled of white, either white, yellow, and warm deer musk. That's the prevailing scent of this, along with iris, whiskey, lavender, rose, suede, and saffron. So when you think about that no structure in the chords, it's a leathery, powdery fragrance that's slightly synthetic because of that sensual musk accord with floral sweetness. It comes off so rambunctious and sexual and sensual, but so avant-garde because of the way it was represented the way the name came across and the way the skin actually developed on the skin made it such an evocative sexual scent i couldn't help but to put it on this list of aphrodisiac fragrances that are of the avant-garde experience this is was an experimental fragrance that is no longer on the market today so i am happy to have shown you guys this particular bottle this particular scent it's a little octagonal bottle Cap has the Larson Perfume uh, logo that's still around. It had skin on skin across the golden plaque, but now that's rubbed off because it was just a print. But all in all, with the last one to two mil left, I will cherish this particular scent for the next two or three years, and then it will be gone. It'll be one of my um, bottles that has gone into my uh, collection as finished. But all in all, like I stated, avant-garde aphrodisiac is what skin on skin is, was, and Thanks to Maximilian Hilscher if you're out there watching videos and you see this one, thanks for putting me on game with Skin on Skin. A great aphrodisiac that was avant-garde in this day. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my video for you guys today. Thank you for watching this aphrodisiac avant-garde video with experimental fragrances in my collection that come off like none other. And if they do come off like one, this particular formula I showed you is one that caters to that collection of being just a bit more of a fragrance that's off the beaten path than the rest. If you enjoyed this content, all that I ask that you do is hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below about any of these fragrances if you enjoy the content here or have a question about one of these fragrances or if you have the fragrance in your collection yourself and you feel the same way or opposite of my opinion, drop the comment below. I can't wait to hear them, can't wait to read them, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. And until then, you have a blessed day. Peace.